Welcome to the Mothers Leading the Way video series. Join us as we explore practical tips and tricks based on research to manage the many roles that working mothers play. Dr. Carmen Cruz presents Work-Life Integration for Moms. Dr. Carmen Cruz has over two decades of experience as a counseling psychologist. As a highly sought after presenter, she provides critical training in integrating work and life, managing stress, cultural differences, and creating safer places for marginalized communities. Hi, I'm Dr. Carmen Cruz. I'm here today to talk with you about um, mom stress is probably the best way to start saying it. Um, but you know, there's always been this stress for working moms around second shift and second shift being everything that still needs to happen after work. Um, and so during COVID and the pandemic, it has um, shifted even more significantly where you know, there've been a lot of um, commentary pieces and, and things written about moms are not okay. So what I wanna talk about today is not so much about work-life balance, but work-life integration, and what are some things that we can do to make it just a tad better, um, given that it's been such a struggle for so many people. Um, so, you know, there's, it's been long documented, the struggles and the stress that mothers face in that way, and so I wanna shed some light on not only how COVID, the COVID pandemic, and also our cultural climate have impacted that negatively in some ways, and also what you can do in terms of, you know, controlling the controllables, you know, what's under your control and something that you can do um, related to your own life that could make things just a little bit better. And so first I wanna start with, you know, how are you really gonna take in this, this video um, and this experience for you to be able to really like come into this space and settle and really think about how, um, if you need to make any changes or adaptations and what those could be based on what I'm gonna share with you. And so really just like coming in, settling and setting your intention for what you might um, catch is the way I see it is like, I'm gonna say a lot of things and hopefully you can catch a nugget or two that is helpful to you, that are helpful to you that you uh, might benefit from. And so that's why I'll cover several ways um, to try to cope differently during this time. So work school culture of the many, many past years um, can be really competitive. You know, there's a lot of pressure of do more with less, you know, just make it happen. We have to do our jobs and then also write emails and attend to all sorts of things that, you know, are, are just constant. And because of major beautiful technology that we all love in many ways, um, it's also created, as we all know, like the work life could continue 24 seven um, because of our devices. And so it takes our own management of our time and our values to really make decisions around work um, in the things that we can control related to work, which are some, not all, but some. So thinking about the impact of um, a couple of things, um, you know, I think something that's really impacted a lot of families and people over the last half decade, um, and probably a little bit even more time has been our shifting cultural and social climate um, that has led to, you know, just greater anxiety at work sometimes regarding issues of difference and what can we talk about, what can we not talk about, and then and it's shifting everything to online for, for many people, not all, because not all jobs could be done online during the pandemic, um, just made it more difficult sometimes to also like keep the relationships up. We weren't seeing people. There was a huge you know, fear factor initially in the pandemic of what does this really mean? How is this gonna affect everybody? Um, so just you know, as a psychologist, I know that the unknown, things that are just unknown and that we can control usually cause anxiety and increase anxiety. And that can feel really, really shifting and, and, and stressful. And, you know, that's why there's more people seeking mental health care than ever, really, truly. And, you know, private practitioners um, that have therapy practices are saying, you know, they have to turn people away all the time. And people are really, you know, seeking help. And the stigma in seeking help has definitely diminished some um, over the last few years, over the last probably 10 years or so. So it's good that people are seeking care using the internet for self-help, using apps, all sorts of things that, that can be helpful to us. And of course, the impact of COVID uh, is, has been immense on all working people. 
um, and having to have children at home at different times and the confusion for parents. Um, just really, really that mom stress has just been completely activated and changed. And so um, I want to go over a few things that, that, you know, women struggle with historically and now even more. So women in general, you know, we're socialized in a certain kind of way to be there, to be uh, available and, and nurturing and caring for people. That is a big role had, that has been um, very connected to a woman's role in life, right? Being there for children, elders, community, her, you know, partners, the house, the food, every, you know, just really grand central taking care of things. And so, but in the research that we have about women and balance and, and strain, the role strain is that there's a sense of, I'm still not enough. I thought I was going to have it all. And even though I seem to have it all, everything feels like I'm doing it at 60 or 70 percent. And so then the biggest factor that that leads to is women feeling guilt, like the mom guilt of I'm not present for my kids enough. I have to be present for work. And then suddenly we had them during COVID in the same space. And that was much harder to talk about not being able to have really a, a good amount of balance um, when you're like, <clears throat> if you have the privilege of having a partner, you can double team and, and take care of the child or children in that way. But, you know, you can imagine for a single parent, there's even more stress of, of having only one adult being able to manage all of that that happened during the COVID pandemic um, in work life at home. And so one of the main tips that I'm going to say that that hopefully you can marinate on and start thinking about is, you know, you cannot be 100 percent to every single person and every single thing all the time. And I think that as women, we want to have that. A lot of times there's like this, we can do this, you know, and yeah, you are very strong, resilient, you got grit, you have strength, and you need care for yourself. You need to replenish, you know, all of those things. And, and so that main nugget is around, you know, thinking about the reality of there's just no way that you can do that. And so part of it is knowing that right now I'm going to be 100% in this situation and I cannot be 100% in all these other ones. And we have to really flow and shift, which can be really, really hard. But overall, that leads a lot of women to a sense of inadequacy, you know, and guilt. And that's really hard when that's what's playing in your mind while you're trying to be present in a certain situation. So women in balance research over the last 10 or 15 years shows two main things. There's daily choices and in intentionality and strategy that you have to think about it. You have to inject intentionality into what you're doing in order to be successful on the regular. And you know, the days are long, the days are long. And you talk to any mom and they'll tell you, oh my gosh, how can that have just happened this morning? <laughs> you know, it's like so much has happened in one day. And when do I get to finally take care of myself? When do I get to chill? And that's usually after the kids go to sleep, right, during that time. And so, so I want to talk about, um, you know, it's going to take some sacrifices that, that might shift your, your way of thinking. Um, but it's really important that, you know, the chronic neglect is going to lead to physical and emotional exhaustion and, and just not... Sat like not being satisfied with life and just feeling like all you're doing is working all the time because you probably are doing quite a bit of work all the time. And, you know, sometimes it can be, um, sometimes it could be fun in doing the things of the daily um, when we can try to inject some of that fun and intentionality into it. You know, one positive thing around guilt and moms is that uh, in the last few years, there was some research that's showing that you know, that guilt of being in the workplace and being successful can be transformed because a lot of children and the research was done on old people that have had working moms and later on in life, their self-worth, their sense of how their mom was. And basically the outcomes being much more positive um, around children feeling like, yeah, my mom was cool. She did this. She did that. And there wasn't that sort of negativity that sometimes used to be like, well, I wish my mom was at home like all the other moms. Granted, that is still gonna be there for some kids and they wish that their mom could be like some of the other moms. At the same time, there's a lot of new research that's positive about working moms. So wanting you, know, you to hold on to that as well, um, that we can have 
both. We can have satisfaction in multiple areas of life. We just can't, it can't be sort of the parade or the, oh, have it all that maybe we thought it was going to be. Um, and especially during these challenging times, it's going to be a little bit harder. So, you know, so one um, thing I want to talk about here briefly is that stress, sometimes we hear like, well, a little stress can be good for you. Well, yeah, there's, you know, there's sort of a, a curve when it comes to stress. If you're too calm, not worried, not stressed out, what's going to happen? You're going to be maybe unmotivated. You're not going to get as much stuff done. If you're over, if you're overstressed, then, and you're kind of almost like, not panicky, but just too, too stressed out, that can cause like freezing up, too much fear, where you can't really perform because you're so overwhelmed. And so there is this kind of sweet spot of, of stress that's called U-stress, which is E-U stress. Um, and it's basically this perfect amount of like not too much stress so you can really function well, um, but it's feeling energized, efficient, on task, and getting things done. So we want to try to stay in that in that point, in that place of being when we are trying to get something done. Obviously, we want to be calm and relaxed other times. So, so one thing I wanted to integrate into this um, short kind of workshop video um, is a little bit of self-reflection and wanting you to pause for a second and think about, you know, how do you evaluate your level of stress? How do you know when you need a break? What are the signs? And so, so sometimes, you know, this is important. So as you self-reflect and think about what are the signs, where do I feel it in my body? Do I, what do I notice first when I'm like, I really need a break or this is, I'm about to start yelling again, you know, and we all have our bad moments, you know, nobody's perfect. And I know sometimes we feel really bad when we have a reaction that, you know, we could have done better. Um, and, and everybody does that once in a while. So part of it is to have some self-compassion, which is um, something that's one of the, the best medicines um, for, for our, ourselves and our emotions and you know, um, treating ourselves right is being a little compassionate about what's going on the way that we might be for someone else. So you know, thinking about where do you feel your stress? When can you stop that? If you notice this, if you notice like, oh, I could just tell when I'm getting so upset, you know, I could just feel the back of my neck starting to get a certain kind of way. Well, that could be one of your clues of like, okay, I need to just go be by myself for two or three minutes and not, not shift my, my reactions, you know. And we can't do that all the time, but we can sometimes, you know. And those are the skills that we want to integrate so that you can pause, reflect, and respond, not react, right? So respond, don't react is one one major tool that you can use and that pause is the most important thing that we can stop and think about how do I want to how do I want to you know respond in this situation right now if I can have the awareness to pause which like I'm saying I know sometimes that can be really really hard um, and then other another piece of the reflection is you know what kind of messages did I get from my family and women specifically about taking care of myself what role models did I see how did they balance all the different chores for women in the household and in the community? You know, what kind of messages? And so that's important because what are you retaining and what voice might you be hearing inside that is saying something in particular that might be making your days more negative as a result? Um, so it's important to evaluate that internal dialogue, right? Your self-talk. What am I telling myself? Um, and whose voice is that maybe that's not mine? So that's something important that you can reflect on. And that can be from our own families. It could be because of cultural influences in our families, like cultures bring in different values for people and especially gender roles. You know, there are different gender roles across cultures. Um, and some might be more strict than others in terms of very traditional binary gender roles. So all of that makes a, a, you know, a difference in how we see you know, our roles, our potency, um, and how much leisure time we're supposed to have or allowed to have and, and all of that. So those are, those are some important concepts as well to think about family and culture. Um, and so, so thinking about that and jot down any words you might want to reflect upon. You know, think if you, if you find something as you reflect on, oh yeah, my Aunt Sarah, she used to say that all the time. I wonder how that impacted me. Or my grandmother used to always say, 
you know, it's okay. Just let them do that, you know. Men are going to do that. Things like that I've heard, like, they're just going to get mad once in a while. Maybe they'll do something, you know, X, Y, or Z. And, and so you have to think about what am I allowing or not allowing to come into my consciousness um, from things I've learned. And another exercise that could be helpful is to write down two or three priorities or values. You know, really taking the time to self-reflect and think, what are my primary priorities in life and my values and how am I living them by my choices every day? And that could be a journal exercise. Um, just you could jot it down on your phone, um, however you want to do it. Just any kind of awareness, our self-awareness, our um, intentionality really can help us create more moments of, of calmness in, in this sometimes really tough life. Um, you know, so when we think about gender socialization, I was just talking about gender roles, we think like, and this is, these are generalizations, obviously, there are people who are raised in different environments, but for the most part, you know, women are told that they derive their self-esteem and self-worth from relationships. Um, to be more compliant, less assertive. It's like crying's okay, but don't get too angry. Um, women generally are also socialized to believe that they should put others first and not themselves, um, and certainly not first or in front and things like that. So um, other, other findings have been that women discredit their own abilities um, at times and tend to some say that if they do something well, it may be because of other external factors, not an internal factor. Whereas men tend to do the complete opposite. Whereas men, if they have success, they tend to say that it was an internal factor, not any external factor that was helpful to them. And again, this, these are generalizations that we in you know, sort of gender work have been really trying to um, dismantle a little bit because Characteristics belong to any human, you know, like strength, emotion, all of those are just human things. They don't have to be only for one gender um, or a particular way for one gender. So, um, you know, so men, it's the opposite of women. Men are taught to compete and to um, not express true emotion or be too vulnerable. You know, you hear men here growing up, this is cross cultural, like boys don't cry. And, you know, boys do cry and men do cry <laughs> they just are told not to and then we have a culture of of men that later in their lives tend to really open up and and be more connected to their emotion just like women it takes a little bit longer to find their strength and power right so um, it's sort of like trying to learn from what we learn from both male and female gender socialization could be helpful to both um, and all genders, both primary genders and all genders, and genders in between. Um, and so, you know, and differently again, because women tend to derive their self-esteem by the status of the relationships and, the, and how their relationships are going, um, men tend to derive their self-esteem, they've been told also from like money and power. What car do you have? You know, all of those sorts of things that, you know, for some men that may not be where they want to derive their self-esteem. And then that becomes different for them in a society that, that sort of demands something else. So with those things in mind, you know, there's one of the main things that, that women struggle with is saying no. Um, and, and no is a complete sentence. <laughs> you can say no, and sometimes why, why do we get affected? Well, it's like, oh, what are they going to think of me? Are they, you know, should I do this? Or what's going to happen if I say no? You know, well... What's going to happen is you're going to have a little bit more time and you're going to have listened to your intuition and, and in that moment recognize that you don't have the bandwidth for that and that you have to take care of yourself in that moment more than pleasing this other entity, whatever that is. And I know we don't have that choice all the time, but we do when it comes to things like PTA or volunteer for this, oh, run for your HOA board. You don't, those are the kind of things, if you're in high stress already at home, that it's important to evaluate and be able to say no for yourself. So, um, so, so thinking about, um, I said strategy and intentionality are the two primary things that we need as women. And honestly, people, you know, I know this is focused on working moms, and, um, but it's some of these tactics and strategies work for, for everybody, potentially. Um, so 
intentionality, strategy, knowing how to ground yourself, knowing when you are off balance. That's the main thing is when are you noticing, like even if I just need a three minute stand by myself outside or in another room, that's really important. So one of the first things I wanna talk about is um, in terms of, as, as I move toward sharing some strategies toward the end of this video is, what is self-care versus stress, man stress management? And so one of the things, that another thing you can reflect upon is what, what, you know, what is my balance with self and other care? You know, we all know like the airplane analogy of, you know, you have to put on your mask first before you put it on someone else, which is counterintuitive, especially to a mother with a child, right? And you want to take, save your child first before yourself. And so, of course, most of your time probably goes to your children and to, not to you. At the same time, what are some things that you can do that can be time for you, you know, that are not um, like, oh, I'm going to go get a massage. Well, a massage is great, number one, if you can afford it. And number two, it goes away really fast. That's, that's a more what we would call like macro self-care, like one thing you do once in a while. You know, or I need a break. Well, I need a vacation. Well, we can't take a vacation all the time either. So what are things that we could do in our daily to help it improve, right? So we know the macro ones are like, I'm going to go get a pedicure. Or I'm going to go have a girl's night with my friends. Or those are macro. Those are big once in a while that can sustain and they make us happy in the moment. And we could think of those memories and they can also make us happy. Okay. But then when I think about micro, they're a little bit different. Those are the daily things. Those are the daily practices that help us get through the week, the month, through life. And the more we can integrate one little thing, maybe it's picking one thing every two weeks to try to do differently and see what sticks. I'm sure that you've tried this with things like, I need to drink more water, or I need to eat more quinoa, or you know, I need to eat, plant-based foods or, you know, I, need, I should go walk 30 minutes a day, like all the things that we want to improve our lives. And, and those are important. Obviously, if we can sleep, if we can exercise and we can eat well, and those are really hard to maintain for working moms daily. It's really, really hard to think about how I'm going to do this. My whole day is taking care of the house, taking care of the kids, taking care of my job, taking care of myself and making sure I make the food for everybody also. So all that is like really, really too much sometimes. It's too much and I'm sure um, you have felt that in, in many periods. So I want you to think about micro versus macro self-care. Really important about that. So one of the things that can be really helpful is breath work. So I don't, you know, there are hundreds and thousands of videos on YouTube and online for relaxation, stress management. So definitely there, is re there are resources out there. If you have a smartphone, you can have access to so many things. There are multiple apps, which I think could be really helpful that provide um, different types of um, relaxation exercises or like sleep talks kind of thing where they'll talk with you and tell you stories at night or walk you through an imagery, anything to create more relaxation. Um, and those are really helpful. Um, to access, there's tons of mental health, health apps um, out there. Um, there's one that's a really good one that's called Stop, Think, Breathe. That could be really helpful. Um, it's free. So, and there's tons, you know, like most apps, there's the, the premium and the free one, but there's plenty of stuff free that you can get access to and have on your phone. Um, okay, the other thing is to recognize that we will always have a to-do list. You know, and the to-do list will always be there and it will regenerate every week like, I gotta go get groceries again or I have to order them to go get curbside or however it is, whatever it is that you do to do the, the, the dailies, right? But what about a to-be list? What about to-be instead of to-do? We are human beings, not human doings, even though we are doing all the time. And so importantly is what is it that helps sustain you? What, what is something that maybe you haven't done for a long time that you like? Like maybe that could just be even drawing or that could be an instrument you played. You could do that 20 minutes a week, you know? Just little things that you can change to connect you with yourself um, versus all the other roles you have in your life. So 
My next tip for you is to accept your emotions. Accept where you are. A lot of times we try to push away our emotion and just ignore it or, you know, we don't have time for it and that's true. There are moments like we can't just be like, how do I feel? Let me stop. Like when we have to work or do something for the kids or, you know, we can't be in this like Zen mode and that's not at all what I'm talking about. I'm just saying accepting that you are frustrated or exhausted or mad and not trying to resist that, but then what can you do about that? You know, what in that moment or a little later at night have something to look forward to when everybody's in bed? And that might be just for you to go to sleep <laughs> versus having to do something else. So part of it is this is just, we have to figure out our own path, our own way of taking care of ourselves a little bit better and um, caring for ourselves, you know, and we're so used to caring for so many people and it's important to, you know, turn that care around and, and give some of that to yourself. That's really important. Um, the other thing is self-compassion. So part of what I want to talk about related to um, self-compassion is that think about how you might act for someone else, right? So if in a certain situation, one question for yourself could be, if somebody was telling me they felt the way I feel, what would I tell them? How would I respond, you know? And how can we say so many uglier things to ourselves than to, um, than to others? You know, we, we, we can be kind of mean in our, in our mind to ourselves. And so it's really important to think about um, how you can give yourself some grace and compassion and recognition of like, this is a lot this is too much and I need a break whatever that might mean and again I know you can't take a break all the time when you need it it's just a matter of changing some things on the daily that can make it better um, so the other piece of self-compassion is that you know you are human just like the other people that you have care for and that you like a friend if somebody said you know I just I'm this I'm this I'm this and you would focus on them and you would talk with them Similarly, giving yourself that kind of care and love could be really transformative. Um, and even if, you know, there's some people that start with 10 minutes a day, let's say doing a gratitude journal, you know, and, and within a few weeks feel like things have shifted for them emotionally a little bit. So that's that kind of little, little changes, intentionality that can make a difference for you. And so, thinking about it is that self-compassion is not self-indulgence it's actually survival and that's really really important for you to think about um, when we think about there's three elements to self-compassion that I want to briefly re review the first one is, is mindfulness and mindfulness basically the basic definition of mindfulness is that being present in the moment without judgment and that can be as simple as like noticing you know taking a moment looking out the window and noticing like the breeze on a tree, you know, or noticing something sweet someone in your vicinity is doing. Um, it could be something so, so small. So it's just pausing, pausing and noticing and just being quiet for even just one minute and just being aware of what's going on and not being judgmental. The second thing is common humanity is that, you know, there are human conditions that we all, um, are part of and we all experience and it's important to to know that we're we are human beings also and and we also need to slow down and that part of life is suffering and struggle and you know it's being present in those moments and also being able to strategize and being intentionally present so you can you know have a little bit more joy on the daily and then the last one is self-kindness self-kindness and really take that in self-kindness it's really important because probably most of you are very kind with other people and and want to be really loving and it's important to really be loving to yourself um, and compassionate for all you do and all you hold it's really really important that you do that so a few other tips as i wrap up um, one is to stop judging yourself as much as you can. That guilt is one of the things, um, and hopefully the guilt can activate you to think about ways that you can um, enact 
a little bit more care for yourself um, in this challenging world. Um, adjust your expectations. That doesn't mean lower your expectations. It just means adjust them. You know, every day is not going to be like the best day ever. <laughs> Some days are just going to be the days that go by, you know, and sometimes the ordinary, you know, is what families and kids really benefit from is routine and ordinary, like things they can count on. So don't disparage that. You know, that's a really important concept to try to hold is what might seem like, oh my God, this is the same thing over and over again every day. Well, yeah. And you know what? Kids really val like obtain value from that in the long term. You know, they really, really do. Um, the other piece about kids is that it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot of money um, or big adventures to make your, your child feel seen and important. You know, there could be something as simple, for instance, I tell my patients all the time, if you have more than one child, spend, even if it's once or twice a month, out one hour with each of them alone. It makes a big difference. It could be something so simple just in their room playing one of their games, you know, whatever that might be, you know, and, and to them that is such a special time and it could be right there at home, free, no need to do anything special. Um, so it, just those little moments make a big difference for children and so it's important to remember that you don't have to take them to Disney World every year to make them happy, you know, and, and things can just be like your love. That's really amazing for a child, you know, even if Yes, when they get to adolescence and all that, they act differently about it and everything, but they see you. They see you also um, trying to connect with them. Um, let's see. One other thing with women I want to say that's a tip is, you know, sometimes related to this issue of self-worth and self-esteem, you know, sometimes women um, tend to really hold on to the negative things that maybe somebody has said about them and really just let the positive ones just flow out. So catch some of those. Think about what, ha what have people told me throughout my life that are consistent? Like many people have said blank about me or, you know, and to hold on to those because, you know, those are important. That's how people have seen you. And even though sometimes it does take a little bit to catch up to how other people see us and our greatness, um, it's important for you to start seeing that and not just disparaging and letting go of comments and only grabbing the negative ones. Grab the positive ones and, and hold those because I'm sure you're doing so many amazing things in your life. So I, definitely that's another tip I hope you can try. Um, and then my last thing I want to say around tips is I hope you have or will find and nurture some friendships or relationships, one or two people where you could really take that mask off, like everything. And I don't mean the COVID mask. I mean the mask that we put on um, of survival out there in the world, you know, where we can be our full authentic selves. Like my true belief is authenticity is the road to personal freedom. And if we can be authentic in those relationships, like it makes us feel so much better. To, so find those people that you can really be just yourself um, and so free. It feels so good um, so that we can tackle the rest, the rest of life, really. So final thoughts. Try not to compare yourself to others because we do it all the time. And really try to find things within yourself that are really good about you and hold on to those you know you put your chin up your shoulders back feel your feet feel like a strong tree you know you are doing so much for so many people especially for your kids trying to create a different life for them and a good life for them um you know naming your stress so it has less power writing in a journal you know listening to podcasts and apps that have mental health and emotional fitness not just you know physical we we definitely need the physical and we also need the mental and emotional um, exercise as well right we need all of it um, refocus the impact you make you know refocus on the things that you make happen every day at work and at home and you know hashtag just do you you do it best so i wish you well in your perpetual work life integration and raising your family, and I hope something in this talk has been good for you today. So take care, just do you.
Mothers Leading the Way team is grateful for the support of the Jane Nelson Institute for Women's Leadership at Texas Women's University, as well as Positive Leadership at PositiveLeadership.com.